you're watching house plan master class and this is episode 4 yes it has been 4 weeks and in today's episode we're going to talk some things which are really interesting and very important to begin with i'll talk about the yellowing of leaves why yellow leaves happen in plants i think this is one of the most common questions i get and the fact that i'm not able to answer with one simple tip is what we'll discuss today then we are going to talk about reporting how to report when to report what are the things to keep in mind when you are reporting and say the difference between upporting reporting not a huge difference but it is always useful to know this uh then we are going to talk about some basic gardening terms tilling mulching deadheading why plants get leggy anything that you might be uh, learning about or uh, you might be reading when you search online so this is going to be your uh, uh say help guide to decode what you are learning online and then finally we are going to look at some common house plant myths some myths that maybe you as plant lovers are being told by other people something that discourages you or something that is keeping your plant babies from being very healthy so let's start without any delay and let's talk about yellowing of leaves how many of you have had ever this question in your mind or have you ever searched online why are plant leaves of my plant turning yellow if yes then let me start by saying that you are not alone almost everyone they have plants where the leaves turn yellow at some point or the other and it's always a big concern it's always a concern even for a seasoned person even for somebody who has been gardening for a long deciphering why exactly the leaves are turning yellow is a big challenge now let's just see one simple thing that i want you to remember first and foremost is aging of leaves is a natural process if you see on the left side uh where you see one yellow leaf this is a very natural process for a leaf to fulfill its life and turn yellow and then shed off from the plant now why me now why we might feel that this is an issue while this is an absolutely non issue is because there's some plants which have length of leaves which can last you for years like say for a monstera or a big philodendron the leaf can last you couple of years or even more so typically when that leaf reaches the end of life and that plant might have only 5 to 6 leaves you feel my plant was absolutely great and now suddenly two leaves have turned yellow but that might just be the two old leaves that came when you at first got the plant and it's a very natural process one simple way to know when the leaf has say completed the life and that's why it has become yellow is firstly the yellowing is very uniform across the leaf the stem is also yellow and the leaf is yellow and typically if you just touch the leaf it falls off there's no effort no any uh, say strength required to detach the leaf from the plant this is the one very simple test for you to know a very uniform yellow to see that the leaf has actually just completed its life that's why i say never worry when you have just one yellow leaf do not worry about it yellowing is natural but when we should worry is when we have recurring yellowing of leaves or we have more and more leaves turning yellow now one of the other things which is easy to detect is a pest attack say you have any pest attacking your plant then also the leaves will turn yellow right again very easy to find if there's anything yellow or if there's anything white like a mealy bug on your plant or if there's any other insect and then the leaves start turning yellow you have to focus on the pest and the eradication of the pest the yellowing of the leaves is because of that So we have talked about two things. One is the natural cause, and the other is pest. Both of them are easy to identify, and essentially, what you will find is uh, that both of them do not uh, say uh, go to a lot of leaves. They will be localized in the sections of the plant. Now let's talk about say leaves that turn yellow due to say uh, lack of light or nutrition. these are also two very important uh, reasons why leaves turn yellow so before we understand why leaves turn yellow we should just think about why leaves are green right 
leaves are green because they have chlorophyll and chlorophyll requires nutrition to be formed manganese magnesium are some of the very important nutrition uh, that help in formation of chlorophyll now let's look at some leaves which are turning yellow because of deficiency of light or nutrition and you'll see a distinct pattern now let's just concentrate on the upper half of this leaf not on the bottom half just on the upper half of this leaf you will see that the veins are still green and the yellowing is gradually radiating out from the uh, veins this is a clear sign that the yellowing of the leaf is due to the lack of chlorophyll and the lack of chlorophyll could be because of lack of light or because of lack of nutrition so very very clear sign when the veins are deep green and the color of yellow is radiating out from those veins always look at uh, light and nutrition and then let's just stay on this photo i'll get this photo back in one minute if you look at the lower half that is the fourth reason why leaves turn brown not yellow but i thought i'll cover that also in this because essentially we are talking about troubleshooting leaves you will see the bottom half actually has a sunburn and how do you know that let's see the photo so if you look at the bottom half there is a clear normally a sunburn will have a circular pattern and uh, the other thing is from the sunburn from the sunburn you have some kind of curling crisping kind of, of the leaf it kind of uh, say shrinks that part of the leaf is shrinking and uh that is a clear sign of sunburn so there are a couple of reasons why this can happen sometimes it can be because you have put the plant in direct sun and that is obvious that this will happen but one of the very indirect uh, ways to that this happens so i remember i was on a live session with the uh, akriti ahuja a couple of months back and uh, her plant was touching a grill and that grill was getting very hot from the sunlight so even though the plant was in shade the grill was extending upwards where it was getting very hot sun so exactly at the points where the leaves were touching the grill the leaves were getting burnt so this is another very important thing to note that your sunburn can also happen when your leaves are touching something very hot your ac exhaust or direct sun right so this will give you a brown leaf and when we talk about brown leaf we cannot move beyond brown leaf without talking about two very important aspects that is overwatering and underwatering very important very important to note so how do you distinguish between a leaf that is turning brown because of overwatering and a leaf that is turning brown because of underwatering do we have a photo okay so let's look at this these two photos uh on one side the photo without hand right that is your left side you can see that the leaves are essentially not crisp they are not crisp there are a lot of these leaf, uh, leaves and they are folding on to themselves so essentially if you touch them they might be sticky they'll be uh succulent in the sense of they'll be filled with water or they'll be moist almost spongy like this is overwatering while on the other side absolutely reverse side is a leaf that has curled up it has dried if you touch it if you crush it in your hand it will be crispy like a chip and that is because of underwatering i think this is very important test and i'll tell you why because just imagine what will happen if you talk about an overwatered leaf if you have an overwatered leaf but you continue to put it more water because you think that it is underwatered that's a disaster right and that is why it is very important to identify leaf turning yellow due to overwatering because if you try to solve the problem by putting more water you'll add to the problem right so a leaf turning yellow by overwatering or a leaf turning brown with overwatering will not be crisp it will be sticky at the stem or when you press it it will be a bit soft that's the sign 
one more thing that is not uh, to be noted here is temperature also plays an important role in the leaves turning yellow say due to cold uh, as you can see in this leaf now there are two two patterns that are clearly visible and and it is uh, very uh, justified for we see white spots which indicate yellowing due to temperature and then we also see the greenish veins and the uh, yellowing radiating out from veins and that is due to lack of light and nutrition so probably light so just imagine if the, it was a bit too cold uh, the temperature effect has caused the whitening and the white spots and because of lack of light which generally accompanies cold then you have that radiation of uh, yellow outwards from the veins so this is essentially a simple answer to the question that I get my plant is getting yellow leaves what should I do now I'll tell you one of the most important things is that I do is whenever you see yellow leaves in your plant don't do anything first of all I, I really believe in this what I would do is I would remove all the yellow leaves from that plant and then just wait another five days that's the only way I know whether it is going to get more yellow leaves or not because many a times what happens is we are not watching the plant too closely it had yellow leaves say three weeks ago we are watching it today now the plant has already recovered the temperature has changed everything is perfect now but we are still trying to uh, rectify that problem a problem that doesn't even exist so always I recommend when you have yellow leaves don't worry about it right away remove all the yellow leaves that's the only way you'll know whether the problem still exists or not another thing to know is always look for new growth I'll take, the, take this example now those who have been uh, joining me for this master class for some time you'll recognize this plant this is a plant I got from nursery about two weeks back when I got it it had only one leaf and that leaf was badly damaged now always look for new growth happening right as long as new growth is happening the plant is happy I don't need to worry about this leaf right now because it's done and dusted it's gone the plant is happy now it's going to do very well so the same thing I like to show say in this one can, can we see this okay you see new growth is happening here right we are getting some new growth here and uh, you can see this new growth is all over the plant now why I want to emphasize that is because what I'm also getting from the plant are leaves like these continuously right continuously I get leaves like these now I don't need to worry about these leaves a lot because the number of new leaves and the new growth that are coming out of the plant is much more than what these leaves are and that's the right balance between say worrying too much and not bothering at all let the plant be certain amount of browning yellowing will happen we just need to look at the overall thing so this was yellowing of leaves and there is one reason what uh, why underwatering can happen and we'll be discussing that right after this short message where i'll also be talking about repotting and uppotting so see you right after this message Welcome back and uh, you are watching Houseplant Masterclass uh, and this is episode 4. Repotting. This is I think probably the second most important thing that I get in my DMs every day. Uh, first one is the yellow leaves and the second one is repotting. Why my plant dies after repotting, when to repot, how to repot. Let's discuss that. You might just recall that we discussed about underwatering. 
and why leaves turn yellow one of the reasons why a plant might be underwatered is because it needs repotting why is that so the plant has outgrown the pot size and the pot cannot retain enough water for the plant to survive have you ever wondered what happens when plant grows roots in a pot when we pot we fill it with soil and then we put the plant now 2 years later the plant has grown but where has the soil gone there was no space in the pot in the first place right we had filled it fully with the soil now we the plant has developed more roots where do you think has the soil gone or how does it have space now to spread its roots the soil the soil essentially uh, as the plant grows the plant the pot loses soil it might be the soil might be lost by during watering it might be lost uh, with air with a lot of processes but the soil has to leave the pot and that's why as the plant become bigger and bigger and it has more roots there is lesser soil in the pot and it just has holes through which the water can seep out but there is no soil left to absorb the water from which the soil the roots can absorb the water and that's why repotting becomes very essential now how to know this plant needs repotting so here is a small clip and this is what we saw last class also when you are shopping from nursery we should look for these pots the roots coming out from bottom roots coming out from bottom is an indication that this plant needs repotting and what do we expect to see when we take out the plant and i will do the repotting here but just to cover this what do we expect to see when we take out the uh, plant from the pot we expect to see a very root bound uh, ball uh, the soil ball like this now this is a root bound plant now for most plants this is not recommended this will hamper the growth now there are some plants which can do well even with root bound like say money plant or say syngonium they are plants which can al always create new roots and absorb nutrition as we have discussed but for any other plant which is growing from the bottom from the pot itself being a root bound for a very long time is going to uh, restrict the growth there will be no growth so now let's talk about repotting how to do it if you have any questions related to repotting do leave them here i'll be taking questions uh, after the session so first and foremost so this one is uh, <coughs> just the soil that i'm using and uh, i'm going to loosen the soil and one should also do this process for your plants so if i have a plant like this i should actually just till the soil this is very important because this is going to allow aeration of the roots but moving on okay so now let's look at this plant and one of the very important things to know is how to take it out of the pot we don't want to disturb the root ball we don't want to destroy any root many of the plants have very tender roots and we don't want to destroy them so if it's a plastic pot i just like to uh go like this and then just i would typically give a support to the plant like this i have put my palm like i put my palm like this so that i can support the plant the worst thing would be if i just tilt it over the plant will drop down and that might mean a dead plant so always give a support to your plant and then flip it over and don't pull the plant out always flip the plant when you pull the plant out basically you are uh, destroying the roots okay always flip the plant now let me try to do it with some other plant 
now <coughs> last session somebody was asking how to report some the plant that comes from nursery in a plastic bag and i wanted to just say one thing make a cut make a cut like this and then open it like this whoa okay again support the plant like a baby hold it hold it like this okay now one very important question one very important question is do i break this soil ball or not that is the important thing to note so if i break it the thing is i risk damaging roots like this now i don't have a problem as such breaking the ball i i sometimes do especially if it is a big ball and i need the plant to go into something smaller but just ensure that you are doing it from places which are don't have a lot of roots like i won't do it from this side it already has this root structure it has these nodes and things i don't want to break it from here once i put this inside the soil trust me the roots will find a way and grow all across the uh, pot okay now let's come to this pot now what do we need to do one very important thing to do is tatha can i keep it on this floor mm -hmm. one very important thing to do is to take out the soil this is what i prefer especially in small pots like this is a 6 inch pot right and when i say 6 inch pot what we mean is we mean the diameter is 6 inch this is 6 inch okay so this is a 6 inch pot and what works best is you take out the soil and then you place your root ball here now this will give you an idea if you need to break some off and okay i put it here okay now very important thing now to note is what is the height of this top with respect to this uh, pot right now the height is this and this is not good do you see a small dent inside the pot okay so right now the height is same as the pot uh, this and this is not good do you see a small dent that is here do you see this ideally uh, the plant we should just put soil and everything till 1 inch below the top of the pot that is very important that is very important because uh, if you put it all the way till the top the problem that is going to happen is uh, you are going to water very less because every time you water it is going to tend to overflow and we don't want to do that we don't want to decide a watering schedule based on how we uh, potted the plant that's why it's important to have that gap also if there's anything else you need to add if you had to add more soil later on you can use that space up also for tilling and loosening the soil so this is not good now two ways to go about it is uh, firstly i'll see if i can get some soil off the bottom of this so now you see how i'm not <clears throat> i am not pulling the soil so what this is allowing is any roots like these roots they stayed just the soil part left and this is important in the whole potting repotting do not pull things you will damage a lot of your plant if you go on pulling things so don't pull things that is the important thing now i have got this here now i'll empty more soil so what i have done is to reduce the height of the plant i have worked on two sides firstly i have reduced the root ball from the plant and secondly i have dug a bit deeper in the uh, pot <clears throat> okay so now we'll place 
we'll place this plant again and now you see the height is now the height of the plant is lower and this is perfect because it's always easier to raise the height I'll just put more soil at the bottom and this height will get raised give me just one second and I'll do that okay so now one thing to note is always put your plant like this first okay if your plant cannot stand on its own then add some support so let's take this different plant so now if I was repotting this snake plant I'll put it it will keep falling right it keeps falling so the right way to start potting repotting is first to put the plant where you want it to be check the height it needs to be a bit higher I put some soil on the bottom now it is at the right space now I want to prevent it from falling so if it is falling in this direction I put some soil on here and I put some soil here now always this is very important can you get your plant to just stand on its own right and it's easy to do you can put your soil and put some foundation like this and it will always stand on its own now why it's important is sometimes when you forcefully get your plant to be planted and this is just from my observation of my own plants then once you water if you have done anything else wrong in repotting then when you water the plants tend to fall on one side or there's a huge gaps formed now we are going to do step by step to avoid that so step one get the right height of the plant step two is make the plant stand in the center just balance it with some soil now comes step three now fill the soil evenly around on all sides not all the way just to half the way okay now comes very important step this is the most important step press it down press the soil down with your fingers okay press it down why are you pressing it down does anyone know now I can put more soil so I've done till halfway it's only done till halfway and I'm going to put more soil on it now okay and now I'm done I'm with a happy plant and one thing to note here about watering uh, whatever I'm talking talk to you about watering and over watering just remember when you repot when you put a new plant always water it well always water it so that this water drains out from the bottom doesn't matter what plant it is and just make sure that you keep it moist uh, for at least first two weeks that is going to be very important the roots are new they're finding new home in this pot and uh, we need to support it unless the water reaches every part of the soil the roots will not have a reason to grow and it is possible that when you have repotted there are certain sections of the pot which is not getting water and any roots that are in that section they are likely to die if we do not water it thoroughly and if we do not water it well right now one thing might happen once you water despite taking all uh, say precautions and doing everything right at times your soil sinks in have you ever observed observed this has it ever happened to you you have watered your plant and then the soil has just sunk in this specially happens after repotting the plants now why does this happen this happens because uh, there was some air pocket inside now very important thing is do not try to adjust a wet soil do not try to adjust a wet soil uh, it is almost like a clay right now if you start to adjust your soil right now you will create a very slippery surface on the top almost like a clay pottery <clears throat> and this is not going to be good for your plant so do not play with wet soil after repotting after I put water even if I find some faults in it I'm not going to 
really play along with the soil. No, not now. So this was repotting and uh, we will continue with our plant myths and uh, one of the important things which I would like to add here is there's a term called up potting and there's called repotting and this is important because there are certain questions that I get rela uh, relating to size of the pot. Now up potting essentially means that you are going to plant it in a bigger sized pot. You are po reap you are going to do a repotting because the plant has grown and then you need to go a step uh, uh, one pot size higher and when I say a pot size it means the diameter of the um, pot. However uh, when we look at repotting it might be because of many other reasons like say because of a soil disease because of the soil being uh, having issue like say if you have it in clay soil and you realize I don't want a clay soil or uh, you have over watered or many other reasons because of which or just that your pot break right so at that time it is always okay to also repot it in the same size of the pot so that was repotting and we'll be back now after this message talking about the houseplant myths and uh, you are watching Houseplant Masterclass episode 4. Welcome back. Let's talk about a uh, couple of gardening terms. Tilling I talked to you about. Tilling or loosening of soil. You take a khurpi and we dig deep into the soil. And why do we do that? We do that to provide aeration to the soil. Or aeration to the roots. Along with this, there is a concept called mulching. Now mulching is very misunderstood. Uh, especially in Indian scenario because I think everyone who talks about mulching come from cooler climates or from other countries and uh, what is the real purpose of mulching the real purpose of mulching is to create a barrier between your soil and the environment so there is a layer of barrier between say soil and the environment and what it can do it can help in regulation of temperature, it can help in regulation of moisture, it can prevent weeds from growing in your plant. These three very important things mulching can help in. So while you might read that mulching is done to prevent from frost and that is a problem in say US and other countries and definitely it helps there. But actually mulching can also really help in an Indian heat scenario to just control the loss of moisture due to evaporation. Mulching can also be really good like I have this lemon tree uh, and it is in a big pot. Now what happens is when there is such a, a big area of soil, a lot of weeds tend to come in and grow in that pot. Mulching is a great idea to adopt there also just to prevent anything from flying in and taking roots into that pot. So always as a basics, since this is a houseplant masterclass for basics, we have to go and see that mulching is nothing but to provide a barrier between outer and the soil. Now you can do it with crushed leaves, you can do it with barks, you can also do it with clay balls. The only thing when I talk about uh, leaves is just make sure that the leaves are dried and disease free. And many a times what happens is the leaves are not dry, you water and the leaves start to rot and it creates a bigger problem than helping you with the mulching. So this was the things and now let's go to houseplant myths, six houseplant myths. Pallavi is going to put up the questions, I'm going to answer them and after that we are going to take your questions. So what is myth number one? Okay, so myth number one is droopy leaves mean plant needs water. I think 
this is very spot on and it could not be further from truth that people believe that solution to every problem is give plant water even as a kid i mean uh, we have done gardening since forever uh, that i can remember but as a kid this was always the thing anything wrong with the plant give water but today you learn that the droopy leaves can also be the first indication of overwatering or it can be because of heat right so when i say because of heat what it also means is lack of humidity because of lack of humidity the stem the leaf generally tend to lose their stiffness and the peppiness and then they fall very common problem in this weather right now in rubber plant the leaves are drooping just simple watering will not help it needs humidity it needs to be a bit away from the direct heat so that's that's very important let's look at myth number 2 bigger means better and this was for pots does it mean that if i want a big plant let me say this one let's take this plant if i want this plant to become like a huge plant should i put it in a big pot that's the question and the answer is no it's not truly the case that a bigger pot is better for a plant a right sized pot is what matters you see when you put a small plant in a very big pot uh two things happen firstly you are going to overwater it because just there's so much more soil that is going to soak in water even after soaking the water i mean even after the plant soaks the water through its root it will always going to have soggy soil so that is not good right the second thing is the plant is just going to keep expanding the roots and not really get into the growth stage on the top it's not going to develop on the top that much because it's much easier for it to grow deeper so a right sized pot is always much more important than a huge big pot so yeah low light doesn't mean zero light so actually this is the truth this is not the myth but so basically saying <clears throat> let's go back to house plant master class 1 and anyone who is new here please if you have time go back to our house plant master class 1 an excellent uh say uh class on light and water even i am impressed that we did that honestly so a low light plant needs light every plant needs light it's uh, almost uh, say i would say foolish Uh, for a lack of better term to expect a plant to do well in a place where there is no light so i know snake plant like let's say this one let's say snake plant is known to survive in any condition but a there is a difference between survival and thrival uh, thriving and the second thing is uh, there is a difference between how long can you have it and how much low light so yes do not take the extreme case of locking it up in cupboard and not opening it for one year it will struggle <clears throat> water droplets burn the leaves actually i'm always surprised when i hear this have you ever heard this have you ever heard that the fact that water droplets will burn your leaves this is very interesting so there is a slight truth to it it is possible but let me just come to this way that to all the plants that we generally see around if you touch their leaves they are slippery right there is no hair on it there is nothing that is going to create a gap between the water drop and the leaf in that case the water leaf is absolutely not going to burn the leaf this can only be rarely possible in cases like say cacti or in uh, plants which have very hairy leaf where the water droplet can be remain separated at a distance from the leaf itself right so in general do not worry about it that's what i'll say Okay so 
Indian summers, I thought, let's take a question that is really made for Indian plant parents. Can I take the wastewater from AC for watering my plants? Okay, so what is your thought on using the wastewater from AC? Have you ever heard people saying that do not use the wastewater from AC for watering your plants? It can be bad. If yes, just comment because I always know that this is something that people ask me and I think that if they are asking me, this is something that they have heard. It is absolutely okay to use the drain water from AC for watering your plants. We have to understand the, the drain water from AC is closest to the rain water. That water has been derived from air. It has been sucked out by your air conditioner and is being thrown out. It is not going to have dissolved particles. It is not going to have harmful chemicals in it. It's going to be perfect for watering your plants. So absolutely, by all means, go ahead and use that water. You are conserving water. You are helping your plants also. It's a great water to be used. Okay, so this is a very common one and I think I've touched upon this in some fashion and I'll also talk about the flip side of this. House plants steal your oxygen. And you've always said, I mean, yes, they give out carbon dioxide and they use oxygen during night. But firstly, they're very little uh, creatures who are taking very little amount of oxygen from you. Another person in the house is taking much more than that. Uh, they take probably one, uh, it'll require almost 300, 400 plants to take uh, oxygen worth of one person, if I'm not mistaken. That's the number I read. And if this logic was true, all the animals in the jungle would have died. So, absolutely, anyone who tells you that this is uh, the case, we have to uh, go and just educate them. It is not true because this is one of the reasons why a lot of people are not putting plants indoors and we need to counter that. We, we need to educate that, listen, you are enough people and that is contributing to more oxygen usage than a plant would. So, and plant is going to do it just a few hours a day. A human is, does it 24 seven, right? So that was the masterclass for today and let's do a quick recap on what we learned today. So what we learned is yellow of, yellowing of leaves is due to many reasons and that can be a natural, it can be pest attack, it can be because of light, uh, temperature issues and also watering stress, under watering and over watering, I cannot emphasize it enough. And sometimes underwatering can happen because of the fact that the plant has outgrown the pot size. And that's when we want to repot the plant. One simple way to see that the plant needs repotting is that the roots are coming out of the pot uh, from the bottom. And whenever we are repotting, it's very important to press the soil in. Make sure that the pot has drainage hole. Very important. Make sure that the pot has drainage hole. Cover the drainage holes with some pebbles or something. I sometimes just use broken uh, clay diya that we get have in Diwali. After it is used, I just break that up and I use it to just put it on the holes at the bottom. Then put the soil. Make sure the height of the pot is one inch below the top lip of the pot. Uh, balance the plant. Press it down. Water till it comes. Water the plant till the water starts to come out from the bottom very important then we talked about tilling we talked about mulching and we also talked about the common six myths that are circulating relating to plants so this was my session and before we head over to question and answer i have a favor to ask if you enjoy our videos just consider subscribing to the channel there's a red button there which says subscribe click on that what that will do is it will send you uh, information whenever we have new videos so whenever you're going to open YouTube next time and if we have a new video up we are going to see it there and if you are like this session do consider hitting the thumbs up button there's a thumbs up button there somewhere and what that does is I know many of you know us from Instagram Facebook and other platforms and that is because we are very new on YouTube 
but when you like a video it helps youtube understand that this is a video that people like and it's worth sharing with other people and that really means a lot to me so i'll be back after this short message and i'll be taking your question and answers see you And we are back and we are taking question and answers. Let's do it. Let's see the questions. Pallavi, put in the question. Uparal. Gitanjali Jindal, my plant wilted and now it is drying up after I repot it. Okay. So the reason why the plant wilted and is drying up is that the roots are not able to absorb water. Right? Now why why that happened. There are many reasons. Firstly, was the soil loose in the pot that you have put in? Because if the soil is not loose, then the roots will not be able to grow and uh, uh, basically spread out in the new pot. Second thing, during repotting, be very careful not to destroy or hurt any root. That's very important thing. At times what you'll see is if your plant is something with multiple branches, a certain part of the plant dies out and that happens because the big root system supporting that part got destroyed so very important these two things the soil has to be very loose so that the roots can spread out and the roots are not destroyed when uh, repotting and i'll just remind once again during repotting absolutely no pulling do not pull anything only flip only tap that's it okay I'll make this up Instagram post. No pulling, only flip and tap. Let's do it. Soil should be dry while repotting. Yes. Uh, Divya Nim Nimma. Uh, I prefer the soil to be dry uh, for a simple reason. Otherwise, as I said, you tend to make a clay pottery rather than uh, work with the soil. At the same time, if your soil sometimes is too dry, right? You can just sprinkle some water. Do not make it moist or wet. Uh, it is just sometimes I know uh, that the soil can become so dry that you are not even able to push it down. It's just flying everywhere. Sprinkle water. Right? That's it. Sapna Rora asks, is it okay to use thermocol instead of stones at the bottom of the pot when repotting? Um, I think technically yes it should be possible. So what is the role of the stones at the bottom? Let's see. Ah. Okay. So we have these holes, right? We have these holes and if I put soil in it and when I water, uh, it will just take the soil also away with it. Now we put pebbles or we put stones or something so that there is a gap between soil and the holes so that the water is able to seep through but the soil doesn't really go out from it. That's the idea. When you move your pot like this, you are not sieving the soil coming out from the holes. That's the idea. So technically speaking, yes, thermocol should be okay. But thermocol balls, first of all. Secondly, your thermocol balls will have to be bigger than the uh, this uh, whole size another thing that i do uh, i don't have it right now with me maybe in this one we have you know the green net that you have there's a green net that you put for cover and all i sometimes just cut small pieces of that green net and i put it on the hole that also works well essentially you just have to make sure that the soil is not draining out that's the purpose okay next 
Mayang Banta ask uh, reported my 5 year old bougainvillea few weeks back now all the leaves have withered away no sign of any new growth for how long should i be patient very good question um mayank uh, you did it uh, how many weeks ago i forgot 2 to 3 weeks ago a few weeks ago okay so bougainvillea actually is a slightly different case because bougainvillea has very high resilience and bougainvillea also has a lot of phases in which it sheds off all its leaves so i would say bougainvillea can take a bit longer to show new growth and i would say one and a half month two month be patient at the same time just make keep watering it regularly whatever is your watering schedule and if your bougainvillea was healthy before and you have not done anything wrong uh in your mind then continue with it because most likely because it is bougainvillea it is generally slow to show growth and one of the other things you can do <coughs> for plants after repotting is to put them in a bit of a shade so that the moisture remains longer in the soil next swati khurana asks how to repot plant that has been overwatered very good question very interesting question uh to repot a plant which has been overwatered is firstly take the plant out and let the soil dry out a bit do not force the soil out now if you observe after you take out the plant that the roots are rotting then make sure to cut off all the rotting parts and there is going to be a time when you are going to say the main root is rotting and then ideally you have no chance to save that plant with that root you have to take the top off separately and you have to root it again okay but otherwise if you have a overwatering situation take the plant out let it air let the uh, soil dry a bit then you see if there is any root which is rotting cut that out and then proceed accordingly most of the times you don't have to change the soil if it is well drained soil and things like that having said that don't rush to repot your plant every time you overwater what is the easiest solution to solve an overwatered plant we discussed this in uh, first class the best way to solve an overwatered plant is to give it more light i'm not saying sunlight i'm saying more light because if it gets more light then it can use more water to make more food then the water will get used up so that's the first step you should always go for Malini Sampat asks instead of changing the pots why not trim the roots and grow big plants in same pots with support Malini great point and that is what is known as bonsai when you trim the growth and everything essentially you will create a plant which is aging but uh, it is not growing in roots and all so this is exactly what bonsai is bonsai is to keep the plant in the same pot or a small pot shallow pot by manipulating the roots and the top when you want to take a plant to become bigger you have to repot it let let let's take this example i i have this plant right can i achieve this plant in a pot like this i can't right i know these are two different plants this is peace lily and this is song of india but if i want my song of india to grow up and become like this i have to give it a better pot so that's the idea this is a ficus bonsai have you any of you seen my video on uh trying to survive a uh, reviving. reviving of plants after 2 months of lockdown this plant was absolutely lifeless but yeah the reason i brought it out right now was okay so this is a ficus so i don't really consider it as a true bonsai but this is what bonsai is look like and this yes you can do it i mean it looks old it is growing but it is in the same small pot size next sapna rora ask uh, how to repot plants that have multiple stems growing like zz uh, peace lily anglonema it is very similar you basically are going to flip out uh, the plant you are going to get multiple stems now with these plants you have a choice you have a choice do you want to make two two pots of the same size that you can do 
you want to make it into a bigger pot that you can do you can also do another thing is you can actually make it into two pots and then add other plants or other cuttings with it so basically you get a lot of small plants and then you can club it like a bouquet or a things like that and it will grow well rupinder jeet kaur says uh, are we supposed to cover the holes in the pot when potting yes and no we have to just cover it enough so that the soil cannot pass through but the water can find a way to go through always have a drainage hole the only reason we are going to cover it is so that the pot the when we water imagine this it has a hole like this there is soil and i put water like this the water is rushing down if the water is rushing down it can just go down with the soil itself no i don't want that to happen so what i'm going to do is i want the water to go down and then it has to go zig 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 so that the soil stays there but the water can go out that's the idea sushma das as some ceramic pots don't have holes in bottom in that case should we water the plant and what to do if it is overwatered sushma das if the pot doesn't have a hole at the bottom i would say do not use it for plants do not one good way to use it is take a small pot and put it in that ceramic pot that's the only way to use it for plants it's it's a very high risk to put your plants in it but since you have asked me that question and let me give you an answer that you can actually use it but it's a bit tedious so how that happens is <laughs> you take your pot put your uh, soil on it you take a very similar uh, pot with the bottom hole and you keep watering the soil and keep measuring the weight of the pot just as the soil uh, water begins to come out from the bottom you will have the change in weight and you will know how much uh, soil takes how much water the water that you poured then every time you water a plant without a hole you know how much water to put in it right but still i don't think it is worth the effort and the risk it's always better to have it with a hole rashi gulati says i do get kind of scared to press what if it is too much and i suffocate the roots okay so that's a valid concern and one thing to do it is uh, always say i i always do it with fingers i i don't press it like i won't close my fingers and press it i'll open my fingers and press it that is one thing that i do the second thing is we are not pressing down the plant itself we are pressing down around it right even after pressing down you will notice when you water the soil settles down but it will settle down more evenly we will not suffocate the plants if the soil is right right so yes it's a bit of a hit and trial but always trust me you'll uh, if you do not press you you will harm the roots because there will be air pockets roots do not like air pockets when you water the soil will get suppressed from one side or the other the plant will become uneven that will harm the plant so it's always better to press than to not press amrit kar is green stick for all plants amrit green sticks is for all plants which are green leafy lush green and for foliage bloom stick is for flowers and for fruits so yeah Shivani Lohani says how do we know that the roots are rotten when you see the roots you'll uh, see they are very sticky so normally the roots are very coarse and dry to touch irrespective of the watering condition even when you're watering it well i mean even if you have just watered the plant take it out touch the roots it will still be coarse right you'll see water on the outside but it will be coarse but when the root is rotting it will be soft and pulpy and sticky that's how you know visually also you will be able to see it mehak rustagi ask i have very hard soil what to do plants are not able to grow in that what should what to do 
Okay, so if you have hard soil, one of the simplest things to do it is, do is take the soil out, break it, uh, uh, and just take it out from all pots to begin with, right? It is not going. It is not something you are being. Uh, you are going to solve inside the pot. So break the soil up, water the soil outside the pot for some days, keep aerating it, and that should help you change the soil. Why soil becomes really dry and hard? Because of bad watering habits. You when you watered earlier, the water was not seeping through the pot, and that's why only a portion of the pot was getting water, and the rest of the soil was getting hard. But this is the way to do it. Thank you everyone for joining me on this episode 4. Before you leave, let me say one thing. Thank you so much for joining. This has been an incredible journey of these 4 episodes. Next week is the last one. And I promise we are doing propagation. I'll just show some video. We have been working on propagation. Next week would be propagation. We are going to do a really big class for propagation masterclass. It's going to cover all methods, be it in... Uh, say soil, be it in water, be it air layering or floral foam, whatever. We are going to discuss about propagating different plants and not just the common most ones. Do join in for that. Do spread the word. Let's have a really interactive and a great class for the last time, uh, last master class. Another thing I want to say is if you want to share your balcony videos, do make some videos in a horizontal setup. Just take the mobile like this. Don't put it like this, but like this. And mail it to me at video at lazygardener.in. Okay, I'll put it in the comment to this video. You can come back to here and just see it. Mail it to video at lazygardener.in. After the master classes end, I'm planning to do a video just talking and showing the gardens of different people who join us in master class. That's what I want to show. And thank you so much. Thank you for coming. And uh, see you next Sunday for propagation master class. Take care.